Hello everyone. This is image 9 for the summer interpretation seminar course for D3 students at the University of Minnesota. We have one maxillary molar periapical radiograph to review. On this molar radiograph, we can identify the first molar, second molar, and third molar. The third molar is vertically impacted. Near the occlusal surface of this third molar, we have a tooth-like density entity. This is likely to be a supernumerary tooth. Based on this single periapical radiograph, we do not know if the crown of the supernumerary tooth is facing the buccal cortical plate or the palatal. Also, we do not know if there is a root of this supernumerary tooth. Or, should we identify this as a complex odontoma? There are several observations here that can affect the clinical outcome of this patient. The follicle of this supernumerary tooth is slightly wide. It appears that the follicle of the supernumerary tooth is continuous with the follicle of the third molar. There is a hint of slight expansion of the posterior wall of the maxilla. Therefore, we do not know if the follicle of the third molar is expanded. The crown of the third molar is superimposed over the root of the second molar. Based on this single periapical radiograph, it is not possible to know if these two teeth are in contact with each other or if there is any root resorption with the second molar. Also, the third molar is close to the floor of the maxillary sinus. We do not have information about the status of the sinus floor. A maxillary molar radiograph has complex anatomic features. When you come to the radiology clinic for interpretation, be prepared to answer anatomy questions. If you need reviewing radiographic anatomy, please find links in the description below. I'll provide links to maxillary radiographic anatomy, mandibular radiographic anatomy, and panoramic radiographic anatomy. Let's review a few anatomic landmarks on this radiograph. This line represents the floor of the maxillary sinus. Here is the zygomatic process of the maxilla. Further superiorly, we see a radiopaque line, and this line is the floor of the nasal fossa. Here we have a corticated line, and this would be the posterior wall of the maxilla. You can also call this as posterior wall of the maxillary sinus. Both are the same landmark. On the distal aspect, we see a vertical radiopaque entity, and that's the hamular process. Here we have a triangular radio opacity, and that's the coronoid process of the mandible. You can see a radiolucency here. That's the clinical hamular notch. The anatomical hamular notch is here. Make sure that you understand the difference between the clinical hamular notch and anatomical hamular notch. Further distally, we have this line. That's the inferior border of the zygomatic arch. So we have several clinical concerns that we discussed about this radiograph. First, we want to know the orientation of the supernumerary tooth or the odontoma, whether it's closer to the buccal cortical plate or closer to the palatal cortical plate. The number two concern was the follicle. The follicle of the supernumerary tooth as well as the follicle of the third molar. If the follicle is large, can it be a dentigerous cyst? We also are worried about the root of the second molar. Is it resolved by the contact with the third molar crown? We also want to know if the third molar can be saved. And 
Also, we need to know whether the third molar is in contact with the sinus floor and the status of the sinus floor. Management of such a case is to obtain a small field of view CBCT scan and the scan will provide us with information about the position of the supernumerary tooth and their relationship with the permanent teeth. Once we know the location and relationship, the next step in management would be the extraction of the supernumerary tooth. Finally, we need to follow up for the eruption of the third molar. On a previous video, we have talked about naming of the supernumerary teeth. So if we have a supernumerary tooth in the maxillary anterior region, we call it is a mesiodense. If we have a supernumerary tooth in the premolar region, it's known as peridense. If the supernumerary tooth is on the lateral aspect of molars, it's called paramolars. And if it is on the distal of the third molar, it's called a distodense. Thank you very much and don't forget to review anatomic landmarks. Thank you and I'll see you with another video.